What's up my friends? Today's video is a sequel to one of our most popular videos on an ideal backpack for a 72 hour kit. We checked out the storage pockets and initial build quality of each of these backpacks in our last video, but now we're back for some real world testing to see which of these carries the best. First, let me introduce our bags, going from least expensive to most expensive. We've got the Prospo 40 liter, costing about $35. Next, we have the Falco 50 liter, costing about $60. And finally, we have our 511 Rush 37 liter, coming in at about 120 bucks. Now, we've got three test dummies with different body types, so you can see which pack will be best for each body type. Dummy number one today is Jack. You might remember him from our video about his most recent backpacking trip, but Jack's just over five foot and around 100 pounds. Then our second dummy today is myself, weighing in at 210 at a height of 5'8". And then our final dummy, we've got Ricky at six foot, weighing 250 pounds. We'll be testing for three things. First being the initial fit, how comfortable it is when we first put it on and how easy it is to get it adjusted down properly. Second, we're gonna be testing how well they hold to our bodies during rigorous movement. Then lastly, long-term wear. How does it feel after hiking with a full pack? We'll be using a grading scale, one to five, with five being the best on each of these packs to hopefully help you pick the right one for each member of your household. Now, we're using water bags and plush clothing to simulate a loaded 72 hour kit, carrying 35 pounds for Ricky and I, and then 20 pounds for Jack's pack. So let's get started with the Prospo. This one has a unique Y-shaped strap coming from the bottom of the pack over the top, which we found to be quite handy in compressing the bag and keeping the bottom of the bag from sagging, pulling you backwards. You want the majority of the bag's weight to sit against your back over your hips so that it's not pulling back on the shoulder straps. This strap makes it easy to compress the bottom of the bag up against your back, bringing more of the weight closer to your frame. Additionally, we have straps on the top of the shoulder straps to keep the top of the pack close to your frame as well. Next, we have our Falco. This one also has the straps on top of the shoulder cushions, helping tighten the shoulder fitment. No wide strap, but after tightening these side straps, I'm not seeing the type of sag in the back that I'd be worried about. This Falco also has more of this breathable padding against your back, which makes a big difference during a long, hot hike with a heavy load. Now for the 511. The shoulder padding feels great. It has a nice padded yoke that actually attaches to the backpack in one giant stitch, as opposed to individual attachments for each strap, making the shoulder strap much stronger and helping spread the weight more evenly across your shoulders. The side straps cinch down nicely, tightening up the body of the bag making for that tight fit that we're looking for. For Jack, he actually found this, the most expensive pack, to be the least comfortable right off the bat, saying it felt too big for him, which is funny because it's actually the smallest of the packs in this lineup. Now, on to the dynamic movement test where we'll be running and climbing over logs to see how well these packs hold to our bodies. Starting with the Prospo, the waist belt makes a big difference on this one since the Y strap tends to pull the base of the back up when really you want most of the weight over your hips, but once you attach the waist belt, it's not an issue. The Falco, on the other hand, sat evenly on your back, even without the waist belt attached. I accidentally did the initial test without the waist belt and didn't even notice until I jumped down from a log and felt the backpack lift off my back. Once I put the waist belt on, it felt like I was part of my body, even while jogging. And now for the 511. The yoke design on the top of the shoulder straps felt the best out of all the backpacks for Ricky and myself. Not so much for Jack, but I think that's due to our larger shoulders and the yoke being able to sit across our traps. This bag has an option for a waist belt, but it doesn't come with one. So we did our testing without it. Not having that waist belt made for a lot of movement while jogging and twisting our torso. So now that we've done some hiking and jogging in each of these bags, here is our final verdict on each. The Prospo padding on the back was lacking, not only for airflow, but also for comfort. You might feel hot points on your back from things in your pack after it's cinched down. Also, on a big guy like Rick, it didn't have the shoulder padding length that he needed. So when he tightened the shoulder strap to his liking, he had a buckle rubbing in his pec, which could turn into a big problem on a long hike. The Falco felt great on everyone. In fact, it was Jack's favorite, despite the fact that he felt some minor rubbing on top of his shoulders. It was slightly pulling on his shirt's collar, pulling the collar under his shoulder strap, causing the strap to rub directly on his shoulder. Now, I think that issue is mostly due to his size and the low chest strap on it. Possibly raising that chest strap would alleviate the issue, but for full-size adults like Ricky and myself, 
we had no complaints with the Falco bag. And now for the final verdict on the 511. Didn't fit as well as the others on Jack, but Ricky and I both felt that it had the best shoulder strap in terms of both durability and comfort. Not having the waistband allowed it to move around a lot more and left you carrying more of the weight on your shoulders, but that's what we get for not spending the extra 22 bucks on a waistband. But where we're trying to show the best cost-effective options, we wanted to see how well it compared without the additional cost. That being said, most of our complaints about this bag would be resolved if we just had that darn waistband. Now, I mentioned our scoring system in the beginning. Let's see how we rated each of these three backpacks using those parameters. Jack rated the 511 pretty harsh, only giving it a score of 6 out of 15. The shoulder yoke didn't sit right on his shoulders, and the adjustments it had didn't conform well to his frame. The Prospo and the Falco were pretty close, but the Falco still won out due to how well it held to his frame. My score between the packs were pretty close, but the Falco still stood out as the winner, again, because of how well it stuck to me while moving. I noticed a difference in the back padding as well that helped it earn an extra point over the Prospo. And now for Rick. Again, the Falco easily takes the cake due to the 511's movement and the Prospo strap sticking into his pecs. And for all those reasons, the Falco is our favorite. The Prospo is a close second for people with an average to smaller frame, but the 511 did not withstand our scrutiny, mostly because we're too cheap to buy all their additional add-ons. But hey, if 511 wants to send us a waistband or their larger Rush 72 pack, we'd be more than happy to make a follow-up video. But with both of these backpacks being well over $100, it's hard for most people to justify using as a 72-hour kit that mostly lives in the closet. Now, with the Falco being the winner, there is one word of caution to potential buyers. Check the stitching of the shoulder straps to the body of the backpack. Make sure there's a solid back stitch as you can see here. Going through the reviews, it appears some people's shoulder straps ripped off pretty easily, which is a shortcoming of the two-strap design. But if it was sewn properly like the one we have, it holds the weight of a full pack just fine. We've had this bag for over a year now with no signs of the strap tearing. Given the price point, I'm not surprised that a few bad stitches made it through the manufacturing process. But that being said, Amazon has a 30 day return policy. Just return it and get another because the vast majority of the people reviewing this backpack had no such issue. All right, that's all I have for you today. Let us know if you like this video and if you have a different pack recommendation or if there's something we missed, please share it down below. Some of the best advice I get is from the comment section, so keep them coming. Until next time, this has been Jake with Pantry Prep.